body of believers. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and mercy in our lives, God. I thank you that we can trust in you, that you're faithful, that we have the opportunity to praise you, God, and to lift up our worship and to lift up our voice to you, God. Hallelujah. You're worthy of our praise, God. You're worthy of our praise, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. So, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. I 
don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God the king of my heart be the mountain where I run the fountain I drink from oh he is mine let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the ransom for my life oh he is my song you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, yes, you are good, good. Oh, let the key. Of my heart, be the wind inside my soul, the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the wind. Inside my sails, the anchor in the winds, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my song. You are good, good, oh. Good, good, 
gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never, sing it out, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Cause you are good, you're good, oh, 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 cause you are
got a river of life flowing out of me. It makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. You open prison doors, set the captive free. I've got a river of life flow. Sing it again. Oh, I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Fire 
and in darkest night you are close like no other i've known you as a father i've known you as a friend and i have lived in the goodness of god hey, lift your voice yes and all my life you have been faithful yes you have and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that i am able oh i will sing of the goodness of god all my life all my life and all my life you have been faithful yes he is and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that i am able yes i will sing of the goodness of god I surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me, yes it is. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me, yeah. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me all my life. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God all my life all my life you've been faithful and all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. You are full of loving kindness and mercy, tender mercies. You 
too big for my God. Today we're going to talk about overcoming word curses in our life. And last week we talked about the power of death and life are in the power of the tongue. Y'all remember that? Yes. Was anybody here last week? Yes. I'm going to review in 30 seconds or less. Proverbs 18:21. death and life are in the power of the tongue. If you want to write these scriptures down, these are the scriptural references that I went with. Uh, Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Deuteronomy 30, 19, he has set before us life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life. Then we talked about in Romans 4, 17, how we can call those things which don't currently exist as if they did exist, but it takes words to do that. And then in Matthew 12, 36, we talked about how we have to give an account for every idle word. And then in 1237, it says, by your words, you'll be justified, and by your words, you'll be condemned. Um, and then in Daniel 10, 12, we talked about um, angels, and uh, they came because of our words. They come because of our words. Daniel uh, 10, 12 says, an angel said to Daniel, uh, I have come because of your words and there's angels activated right now because of our words they're watching what you say they're waiting for the word of God to come out of your mouth so that they can hearken to the voice you are the voice of God's word amen so today we're going to talk about so I did pretty good didn't it maybe 45 seconds James, uh, James 3, uh, verse 9, it's talking about the tongue, uh, the untamable tongue. And, um, but I would propose to you today that the untamable tongue is talking about the unbeliever because I believe the believer can tame your tongue. Amen? Amen. And so it gives both examples, but uh, many people gravitate toward the untamable tongue but I want us to gravitate toward the tameable tongue. It's almost a tongue twister, isn't it? The tameable tongue. When you put the word of God in your mouth, it becomes alive. It becomes effective. It becomes sharper than any two-edged sword. But you got to speak it out. The word is not effective just in printed form. You have to take it, put it in your mouth, Mix it with faith and release it into an atmosphere for it to come alive. There's Bibles sitting all over town on shelves collecting dust that are no more powerful than the dictionary it's sitting by. But when you take this word and you put it in your mouth and you mix it with faith in your heart, it becomes alive and the sick become healed, the dead become raised up. The broken relationships get put back together. Minds become renewed. And people get saved. Praise God. And so we're going to look at, at word curses. Has anybody ever heard of word curses? Uh, maybe uh, they've said you're under a word curse or somebody has spoken a word curse against you or your family and your family may have lived, have, may have been living under a word curse. Well, we're going to look at what a curse is. A curse is a negative force that adversely affects individuals, families, groups of people, and geographical locations. What's the cause of a curse? What causes a curse to come? You know, in Proverbs it says a curse causeless does not come. So every curse has a cause. There is something that caused a curse to happen. And we're going to look at this, not to produce fear, but we're going to open this thing up and look at it in the eyes and watch it wither away. Watch it wimp away. Curses are wimpy. And you're going to get set free from some things that have clung to you and you're not going to have to live under a, a, any kind of a word curse from this day forward. 
That's the good news. Amen? And we have power to overcome word curses. Word curses are not uh, something that we have to live with, put up with, uh, weigh in under, let it become heavy or overbearing in our lives, and not to be afraid of. Somebody tries to put a word curse on you, it's like water off a duck's back. It can't stick if you know how to hear it. Amen? Amen. Galatians 3, 13 and 14 says, Jesus has redeemed us from the curse. And then, uh, so what causes a curse? A curse comes when you violate certain spiritual laws or they come when words are spoken to you. When you violate a spiritual law, did you know there's spiritual laws? That means they're going to happen, and, and if you cooperate with them, they happen automatically. If you don't cooperate with them, the curse of that law happens automatically. But Jesus, in Galatians 3.13, has redeemed us from the curse of the law, so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us, the Gentiles, those without a covenant at that time. We're not a Gentile anymore. We've been grafted into the vine. Amen. Amen. Many Christians and believers uh, unknowingly live under the shadow of word curses spoken by themselves or by others. In James 3, 9, it says, with the tongue, we bless men and we can curse men, mankind. And you can be one of those people that your tongue curses by speaking things over your life that violate spiritual laws. Amen? Amen? So we're going to break some of this stuff off of us, off of uh, some things, off of some things in our life. And it's going to be powerful. It's going to be powerful. We've never, I've never taught on this subject before in 14 years. And so we're just bringing the hammer out. We're, y'all remember Gallagher? That comedian that would take the um, watermelons and he'd have the big hammer and he'd, and the front two or three rows would have. I'm aging myself. Look at everybody's blank faces that are 30 years and younger. <laughs> but he would take these, this big mallet and phew, smash watermelons and it'd go all over the house. Anyways, that's what we're going to do to word curses. I have a vast library of illustrations. <laughs> Branson fountains, Gallagher smashing watermelons. I mean, it's pretty spiritual. We can, we can hinder our lives through self-pronounced word curses Amen. when we make concluding statements like, I'm dumb, or I can't do that, or I'm accident prone, or this will never change. Those, that's what we're talking about today. When we say things over our lives that, that uh, are false concluding statements about the situation. And so um, these statements reflect that we don't understand the power of our words that come off our tongue. And so we're going to look at it, and we're going to start speaking blessing out of, our, out of our mouths to change situations. Now, some of you have heard this. Some of you may be exp- um, experts in this, but if you already know this, This isn't a time to unplug. This is a time to strengthen your faith in this and begin to speak things out over other people's lives and yourself. Amen? Amen. You know, in Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, and 25, it says that we can have whatsoever things we say if we don't have doubt in our heart, but believe that those things which we say shall come to pass, we can have whatsoever we say. 
and yet when we say things, they don't come to pass. Why? Why? Because we haven't trained our tongue and our hearts to believe what we say. We don't really believe what we're saying will come to pass. Because we've desensitized our spirit to believe you don't really mean that. And so when we really do mean it, our hearts don't hook up with faith. There's doubt involved. Does that make sense? So when you say, I'm gonna, I, we died laughing, your heart has heard that so many times that when uh, you go to say, cancer, we curse you, it thinks you're kidding around like when you say, we died laughing. And so there's this buffer zone so that you don't get whatever you say because we've been so loose with our mouth that we don't really believe what we say. So there's this buffer zone so we're not all fried and died and laid to the side. You know, if you say, get out of the street, that truck's going to hit you, you don't really believe that. Because if you believed what you said, that truck would have hit him. So there's this buffer zone so that the truck doesn't hit the kid. So when we go to say, why do we say things over and over? It's not just a meditative mumbo jumbo of, of uh, blab it and grab it. People that don't understand the, the, that message... Uh, they call it blab it and grab it, name it and claim it, and all this stuff, and they make fun of it because of the buffer zone that we really don't believe what we say. But that's all changing. Because I want it to when I say with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is the Lord of my life, I really want that to happen in my life. When I speak to the mountain, I really want it to be removed and cast into the sea. When I speak things over my kids, I really want what I'm speaking over my kids to happen. I'm not calling out the situation as it is, but I'm calling those things that don't currently exist in the current atmosphere, in the current circumstance. I want what their future is to belong to them right now in the present. And so a lot of times we have to say things over and over to convince our heart to believe it, for it to kick in, for it to come to pass. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so um, when we speak carelessly, then we find ourselves living in a prison of restriction and difficulty. And so this is what I don't want to happen. I'm not trying to get everybody deputized to watch everybody else's mouth and say, you shouldn't say that. Ah, you shouldn't say, you just preached on it. You you shouldn't say that. But to begin to, to put a seal on your mouth so that words that you say convince you or convict you of do I really want what I'm saying, what I'm saying, what you personally are saying coming out of your mouth to come to pass? And ask the Spirit of God to, to tune your ears into what you are saying and to convince you to either stop saying that or to begin saying this. And so we've inadvertently given power to curses, violations of spiritual law in our lives, we've, given, we've empowered those violations because we are saying what we have instead of having what we say. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so I'm not looking for uh, people to... Uh, be raised up to watch everyone else's mouth and watch everyone else's word and play Holy Spirit and convince you you shouldn't say 
what you just said. Have some mercy. Have some grace. You, you've been, some of us have been saying things, me included, have been saying things for decades. And our heart is convinced that what I'm saying is true. Those phrases I just used, I'm dumb. We'll never get out of debt. We'll never get out of this. It's so real to a lot of us that we've just been calling what we have instead of having what we say out of our mouth. If you don't like what you have, change what you're saying. Amen? All empowered, this includes everybody, no one is excused. All in, you are empowered believing Christians. You can silence yourself from speaking word curses over your life. You can. You can silence yourself. There is a grace. There is an empowerment for this. There is an empowerment for your tongue. The untamable tongue in James that it's talking about is, is people that speak carelessly word curses over their life. But it does give instruction if you're looking for it. If you're looking for it, it does give instruction how you can bless people with your tongue. How you can bless yourself with your tongue. How you can have what you say. It's a theme throughout the whole Bible. So what this doesn't mean as well. I mean, sometimes you have to look at what it doesn't mean um, to just get it out. It doesn't mean that we're in denial and we're, we're seeing something happen in our lives, tragedy, loss, uh, adverse circumstances are coming at us. It's not denial. It's not saying, nope, I don't see the truck coming at me. That truck is not going to hit me. And you're standing out in the middle of the street. That is not what we're talking about. You know, the, the, you've probably heard this joke when, you know, the, the lady, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> not going to say it. Somebody's going through this right now, so, you know, never mind. I put a seal on my mouth. There you go. <laughs> It's, it's about being purposeful about speaking uh, negative, unbelieving conclusions about the matter. You can address a matter, but it's not the conclusion. You may be sick, but that is not the concluding statement. And it's not wrong to tell somebody, hey, I feel terrible. I feel sick. That's not a curse over your life. That's acknowledging the situation, and then we apply the word of God, yeah. the, con the real concluding fact about that. Sickness is not unto death. Mm -hmm. Sickness is not your, conclusion, mm -hmm. your concluding fact. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Am I confusing you guys? No. Nope. Okay. And so... Um, Let's just, let's just do that right now. Let's just ask God to put a seal on our lips. We sing about it. Put a seal on my lips so that we won't curse and abort the great things that have been prayed over us, spoken over us, prophesied over us, prayed over us that... that that we've obtained through presence and obedience, that we don't abort that with our mouth. Let's put a seal. Ask God to put a seal over your lips. Put, putting a seal on your lips is not denying that problems exist. I have to reiterate that. 
I, I've, I've seen it where just, I mean, you can tell somebody's not feeling good. What's going on in your life? Nothing. Huh. Nothing. I'm too blessed to be stressed, too. <laughs> Forgot how that goes, but it's just a rote thing that, that comes out of their mouth, but there's no faith behind it. That you can tell they need some money. They're, maybe their lights are off. Maybe they're, they don't have any food. Maybe something's going on financially in their life. How's it going? Do you need some? Nope. All my needs are supplied according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But your kids look hungry. Nope, we're not hungry. We're filled with the word. of We eat the word of God. That is extreme ignorance mm -hmm. of what God is trying to do here. Amen. It's not the denial of the problems that exist in your life. It is the belief that that's the concluding fact in your life mm -hmm. that we're trying to break out of. Yes. It's not stuffing things that are wrong. Mm -hmm. I've seen this when people have had great loss in their life. How you doing? I'm doing just fine. Nothing's wrong with me. And they have pain on the inside of them, but they don't acknowledge that I'm grieving. I'm, I, I have sorrow. I, it's okay to grieve. It's okay to cry. But it's not the concluding fact in your life. It's a process of healing that will come. And if you don't grieve properly, if you don't express that pain properly, it will come out later yes. in a different form against different people. Right. Putting a seal on your mouth is, is um, not being irresponsible about things that need to be done. You see something going on that needs to be addressed. You cannot use the excuse. The Spirit of God put a seal on my lips today in church. So I'm not going to address that and see that person hurt and abuse and damage everybody around you. Amen. Amen. What it is, what this is, what I'm, I, we have to get this in. And it's, it's good that we're doing this at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. It's to focus more, setting a seal on your lip is to focus more on the solution more than the problem. Amen. If you come to me with a problem, Please come to me with a solution. If you go to someone with a problem, don't just put that problem on them. But say, here's the problem. Here's what I feel like God's telling me to do about it. What do you think? Putting a seal on your lips is, is speaking hope into the hardest of circumstances. <laughs> you are in control of your mouth. Amen. You are. We are. And pressure comes sometimes, and it just comes out. Negative stuff comes out. Yes. Amen. Amen. Negative stuff comes out when the pressure is on, but putting a seal on your lips is about speaking hope into hopeless situations. When someone presents you with a problem, it's speaking the exact opposite into that situation. Amen. Instead of just saying, wow, I've never seen it that bad for anybody in my whole years of ministry. You got it bad. 
oh my gosh. We should probably have people stretch their arms out to this situation. This one's a hard one. God's not going to answer unless the whole congregation stretches their hands out for this one. No, it's, it's saying, you know what? The spirit of hope is stepping into your situation, and I expect God's going to take this situation and turn it around for good. He didn't make this situation bad so that he could receive glory out of it, but he's taken this bad situation and turning it around for your good. It's the backstop for things that get past our faith. Amen. Here's, here's a good one. Put, putting a seal on your lips is refraining from giving voice to pessimism and criticism of others, self-criticism for yourself, and other forms of unbelief. <laughs> self-criticism. Nobody talks about it. But we all have that voice in our head that criticizes ourselves. You're insignificant. You'll never be enough. You big dummy. Why did you say that? Why did you do that? And it tears down everything that you just put out there. That is not the voice you're to give voice. That is not the voice or the words that you're to give voice to and put them out in the atmosphere. That's putting a seal on your lips. And you can control it. You can control it. You can be free from pessimism. Somebody just said, well, I doubt that. (laughs) 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 Praise the Lord. (sighs) (laughs) You can be. You can be free from pessimism and be having this critical outlook on everything. And seeing the wrong in everything. Putting a seal on your lips is finding a solution for everything that is presented to you. Bringing hope to hopeless situations. Instead of just getting in there and becoming hopeless yourself. Amen? Amen. How many of you are seeing, maybe I need to put a seal on my mouth and begin to turn this thing around with the words out of my mouth, and maybe begin to speak solutions, what have I been saying that I'm currently experiencing today that I can change with just a simple, and it is so simple, it's hard, but it's simple. It it is a simple adjustment to put a seal on your lips and become aware of what you are saying is what you are currently experiencing. If you don't like what you are currently experiencing in any area of your life, you can begin to speak the solution into it and give it some time. Give give yourself some mercy. If you you mess up once, just just don't mess up twice. If you fall off the wagon one day, don't make it two. Get back up on the wagon. What, if you don't like what you're experiencing, change it with your words. Change it with your words. You say, well, I don't know what to say. I, this is bad. This is just, stop. If you don't know what to say, what did your grandma used to say? Say nothing at all. There you go. I'm going to go through this real quick. We'll pick it. I know what I'm going to talk about next week, but I got to get through this so I can get to next week. <laughs> but I'm going to run through this pretty fast. So number one, how do we overcome word curses? Stop the flow of actions that produce the curses. Stop the flow of actions that violate spiritual laws in your life. Amen. Two, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal any spiritual root that is blocking your blessing. This is very practical stuff. 
He'll reveal to you word curses or violations of spiritual law. He'll reveal to you what either you have spoken over your life or what others may have spoken over your life. Maybe a significant family member, somebody that you valued, somebody that you trusted, somebody that you believed what their uh, concluding facts were that spoke over you. Maybe it was a parent, maybe it was a grandparent or a brother or a sibling or a good friend. Maybe they spoke something that you valued what they said and you believed that that was the conclusion over your life. You can stop it. You can stop believing that. And then uh, number three, you can renounce your agreement with these lies and come into agreement with who God says we are, what God says we can do, and what God says we have. Amen. When you do this, there'll become this deeper revelation that there is power in what you are saying. Do you really want to say that? Yes. It, it's like when you learn... if. If you have learned how to drive a stick shift, anybody in here learn how? Remember the first couple of times you were driving a stick shift, and you're driving this car, and somebody's telling you how to release the clutch and put in the gas, and now take it down to second, and 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 everything was just like so mechanical, so clunky, so awkward. You're thinking, who would ever want to drive like this? But you get used to it. You learn how to drive, and now you can drive with one hand, turn the radios, tune in the station, eat a cheeseburger, throw a fry back to your kid in the car seat, and shift into third without even thinking what's going on. That's the way this is. Right now, it seems clunky. Every word that you're saying is just like, oh, it's, it'll be in slow motion, the words will come out, and before you can speak it, it'll be like, oh. And you'll grab it as it's flying out. Sometimes they get away from you. Repent, renounce your agreement with that, and start believing and coming into agreement with what God says you are, who God says you are, what he says you can have, and what he says you can do. And you'll start seeing your atmosphere, your experience, your circumstance change by just speaking words and putting a seal on your mouth. Praise God. And so next week, we're going to talk about how you hear things has an effect on if word curses stick to you or repel from you is how you hear it. Someone says something that's a word curse to you or it violates a spiritual law of who you are, what God says you can have, and what God says you can do. It depends on how you hear it and then what you say in response to it, if it sticks to you or it repels from you. Amen. And we're going to walk free from some spiritual word curses that are on our life and be totally free and you're going to feel so much better you're going to feel so much better you're just going to, it's going to be like someone just released you and you're just whoosh, launched out into your destiny launched out into your purpose launched out into your assignment of what God has for you but you've always felt clogged down bogged down or something has always stopped you well, we're going to get the word curses cleaned off of you so that now there's no excuse for God not to use you and deem you fit for the master's use. Let's stand up. Praise God.